And my name is Neil Brooks. I live in Cherokee County, North Carolina. I cast my first vote at the age of 19, and it was November 6, 1984, and it was for Ronald Reagan's second term. I have voted straight Republican in every single election since then. I am currently a retired federal corrections officer. I worked with the United States Department of Justice Federal Bureau of Prisons. I was a union president with them, a senior officer specialist was my uh, title with, with the agency. Um, I currently, uh, and, and for the last many years, I'm a caregiver to my wife of 37 years who is severely disabled from a brain aneurysm. I raised two daughters during all that and, and cared for my wife, uh, sort of a stay-at-home dad. So I've, I've seen every end of the spectrum. Uh, from from a active working middle class law enforcement officer to a stay at home mom or dad I guess uh, last year or in 2016 I voted for Donald Trump I was against Donald Trump at first uh, I was for the more mainstream Republican voter uh, candidates such as the Bush uh, guys and, and folks like that uh, ultimately though. I came in line as any good Republican, lifelong Republican would do, lifelong NRA member, uh, ex-law enforcement officer, I, I voted for Donald Trump. And I voted for him at first reluctantly, but as time went on I thought, well this guy's not doing a bad job, he's better than what I thought the alternative was. That began to change over the last year and a half as I watched what went on in our country, and I watched the hate and discord being uh, uh, shelled out from the White House and White House press briefings and, and uh, interactions with the public with Donald Trump, uh, never seeking to unite, but seeking to divide constantly. And that wore on me for a while. Uh, once we got to these new, uh, this new election cycle, and again, a big factor for me, I'm, a, I'm also a Christian, a very active Christian, uh, uh, and strong in my beliefs. And when Mike Pence stood on the stage accepting his nomination, reciting Hebrews 12 and began to remove the name of Jesus Christ and insert old glory and direct people from that stage to remove their eyes from Jesus Christ and focus them on old glory. That was an epiphany moment for me and I realized what mistake I had made in voting for these two men. And I began to realize I needed to look elsewhere. Last night was the debate, the first debate. I watched a president of the United States, a sitting president, stand on a stage speaking to America and tell what I would consider racist terrorists, the Proud Boys, and others to stand by in the event that the election doesn't go his way. Now I've seen that before. I've seen it with other world leaders. I've seen it in a guy named Gaddafi. I've seen it in a guy named uh, um, uh, from Iraq. Uh, Hussein. Hussein. Saddam Hussein. Sorry, I had a moment there, a senior moment. Uh, I've seen it a lot of times. We've seen it in Fidel Castro. We've seen it over and over again. And we've seen it for the first time in the history of this nation from a president of the United States in a debate to the American people that he told essentially terrorists to stand by in case he doesn't win this election. 
and this can't stand. This is, for me, the most defining moment. When I look back and think that I actually cast a vote for him in 2016 and was deceived enough and blinded enough by my own uh, lifetime of voting for one party, it saddens me. But then I look at my grandchildren and my children, my daughters, my wife, and I realize this, this has got to change. So on the, in November, I believe, you know, November 4th, whatever date it is, uh, November 3rd, I'll be casting my first vote in 37 years of voting for a Democrat, Joe Biden. Now, do I perceive or believe Joe Biden is everything I want in a candidate? I've never voted for a person that was everything I wanted in a candidate. It's never happened. But what I will not vote for and cannot vote for is what I essentially perceive as treason by an American president to call to arms Americans against other Americans. Whether we believe or uh, perceive that Americans' politics to be in line with ours or not. It just is not acceptable that a sitting president would stage militants and have them prepared to maintain his power is what Saddam Hussein would do. It is what Gaddafi did. It is what Fidel Castro did. And now it is what Donald Trump has done. God bless America.